64,000 is the median number of words per book. Average person reads about 200 words per minute. Simple math will tell us that is one book in 320 minutes. To accomplish this in seven days, numbers say you would have to read for 45 minutes a day. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification button, like, comment, and share. Enjoy. Hello, and happy day. How does slowing down sound to you today? Would you like to reduce the noise for just a bit? Are you ready to make a choice and decide to listen? My name is Igor, SF Walker, and I'm here to remind people to slow down, to reduce the noise, to walk, their lives into a natural flow. Welcome back to the Book of the Week series. Every week, as I read another amazing title, I share it with the world. Today, we look at Claim Your Power by Mastin Kip, a 40-day journey to dissolve the hidden blocks that keep you stuck and finally thrive in your life's unique purpose. In this video, we rediscover how to get to the promised land of your purpose. You've got to wander through the deserts of your traumas. Bringing your purpose to life is real work, and it is hard. Nevertheless, your purpose transforms trauma into power, and finally sets you free from any person or any circumstance that caused you pain. To get there, you have got to get to the root cause of what's kept you stuck. Stick around till the end. I will share with you some tools I have and use that will help you tremendously in this game of life. Discover a way to find out what actually motivates you. What innate human need is driving all of your decisions and your behavior. I will share some tools to improve your self-awareness, social awareness, self-management, and relationship management. Read this book not for yourselves, but for all the people you will touch from this day forward. The more you work towards your purpose, once you know what it is, and the more you work from your higher self instead of invisible trauma-induced habits, the better you will make every person you touch for the rest of your life, from the grocery store clerks to your most cherished family members. Use this knowledge to do more than just survive. Be way more than enough. Thrive. If you haven't been getting results up until now, it is probably because you've been focusing on the symptoms of what's keeping you stuck. But haven't gotten to the root. Discover the root cause of why you're stuck and help you dissolve it for good. When you do this, anything is possible. While you may have been spending a lot of your time focused on your goals, your dreams, and where you want to go, until you discover and dissolve the root cause that is keeping you stuck, you'll just keep running in circles. Abundance in all its forms is a byproduct of discovering and bringing your purpose to life. The only difference between people who are truly abundant and thriving spiritually, emotionally, romantically, financially, and professionally, and those who are stuck, stagnated, and feeling they're missing out and living the same boring, depressed, and small life, is that those who are truly abundant know their purpose, and they're living it daily. When you bring your purpose to life, you do connect to dormant energy and power. Doors open. Things turn around. You go from being stuck, confused, and pinning for something more into stepping into the greatest expression of your life that you can imagine. You don't have to aimlessly chase money. Money will abundantly follow you. You don't have to change yourself or stress about finding soulmate or love. Your soulmate will be where you're going. Your purpose transforms trauma into power 
And finally, sets you free from any person or circumstance that caused you pain. Sometimes, skepticism can be a way to hide from living your purpose. Bringing your purpose to life is real work and it is hard. You have a deep knowing that there is something greater for you to bring forward. And you're ready to finally figure out what the heck it is to get to the promised land of your purpose. You've got to wander through the deserts of your traumas. We have got to get to the root cause of what's keeping you stuck. We've got to be more honest than you've probably ever been. You have got to face your biggest fear. You've got to call BS and you've got to find the part of you that is far greater than this fear. Now this is serious work that pays off the highest rewards this life has to offer. And it will not be easy. You will want to quit and you will make lots of mistakes. That's just how it goes. No matter what you've been through, someone else and most likely millions of other people has gone through it or is going through it right now. Your problems, your past, your hurt, your trauma, they're not what makes you special. What makes you special is your ability to discover and thrive in your purpose in spite of all those things. Remember, all the problems in my life had one thing in common, me. Even though that might stink for a bit, it is true. What is also true is that it was the same equation for my success. Every success in my life had one common denominator, me. Having a vision alone doesn't make you healthy, wealthy, and wise. It takes action. It takes work. Most important, it requires that you find courage on a daily basis. But there's a rich reward for doing so. You see, trauma is a nightmare of thoughts, images, and emotions based on pa past wounds that creates an unconscious and irrational stress in the body that suspends awareness of our infinite nature. Just because you have been victimized, it does not mean you are a victim. There's a big difference between I am my wound and I was wounded. So in order to jump out of being a victim at the level of identity and saying you were victimized, you must say the following. I have felt like my identity was my wound. I realized that that is not totally true. What actually is true, I was wounded. Now I can find new meaning in that wound, which will set me free. Then I can live my purpose. The most extreme examples of people who have endured victimization and rose above it have all come to the same conclusion. I am not defined by my past, no matter what has happened to me. You do not have to ignore it. You do not have to agree with it, or you don't have to pretend it did not happen. And forgiveness doesn't mean you're condoning what happened. But if you do not forgive and get free, the people who did hurt you are still winning. People talk about wanting to live their purpose all the time, often like they are exact opposites of their current lives. But here's a simple and difficult truth. You are exactly where you want to be. Now you may say, no, that is not true. I do not want to be stuck in this dead-end job. Or, no way, I've never signed up to be in such an unfulfilling relationship as the one I am in now. But the fact that you are still in that exact same situation says that you have accepted this 
as your fate for the time being. You have settled for less than what you desire. But for whatever reason, you haven't taken the steps to make a change. You have become comfortable with a less than fulfilling life, always looking for distractions. Now look around you. Creation exists. We have been given a chance to do something with these lives that we did not create ourselves. You did not create your heart, yet it beats. You did not create your lungs, yet they breathe. You did not create your skin, yet it protects you. You did not create the sun, the oxygen you breed, or the food that sustains you. You did not create water, and yet it is there for you to drink. What did you do? You chose to come here at this moment, in this space and time, and to give your unique gifts to the world. You, right now, have a radical opportunity to claim your power by discovering and living your purpose. There is a new model of personal growth emerging, the heart model. There are three things that are true within this heart model of transforming your life. Intense emotion plus a belief plus action equals results. You live within circumstances and within patterns you have created. Your circumstances and your patterns can be changed at any time. You've got to feel something. You see, trauma is stored in the body. The problem with trying to only think your way into healing is that you ignore the very thing that needs to heal your body. So we've got to go deeper than that. And we got to feel our way from pain to freedom, from hurt and resentment to forgiveness, from small to unleashed. This transformation happens at the emotional level, not the thinking level. Understanding the power, the relevance, and the profound wisdom in all your emotions is the key difference between the head and the heart model, because they are what is going to point the way towards our transformation. The true demonstration of courage is learning to take directions from your heart, no matter what your brain says. When you do live your purpose, you will be tested over and over again. You will come face to face with your deepest fears right before you transcend to the next level of your emotion. Why? Ultimately, so you can be shown that your worst fear has no power over you. And when you face your fear, you transcend it. And that is how you cast out fear. There are predictable SPs or survival patterns. In fact, here are the top 11. Putting yourself last, trying to control other people, perfectionism, playing small, always assuming the worst, doubting your higher wisdom, addiction, procrastination, staying in toxic relationships, needing the approval of others, Confusion, saying, I don't know, all the time. Survival patterns, SPs. Unless you are in mortal danger, fear is a compass showing you where to go. Anatomy of transformation is a simple five-part system. Now, the layers, they descend from the most superficial to the deepest. Number five, behavior. Number four, story thoughts, mental level, how you describe your circumstances. Number three, emotion, the hardest layer to crack. Number two, beliefs, meanings created from past trauma. And number one, the original incident, OI, the trauma itself. Positive polarity emotions are a sign that you are aligned with your purpose. Negative polarity emotions are a call for awareness. A sign that you need to get back into alignment instead of negating or suppressing our negative polarity emotions. We must liberate them. 
in a healthy way so that we can understand why they are there. All transformation has three phases and they are excitement, fear and resistance. And here's the cosmic irony about fear. When you are afraid to take action because there is an outcome you are afraid of, not taking action produces the outcome you are afraid of. So you are living within a self-fulfilling prophecy. One courageous action in a dead area of your life is more powerful than a thousand therapy sessions, a hundred bottles of green juice, and all the yoga you can twist yourself into. How do we get there? Well, we've got to descend down the anatomy of transformation ladder. You see, if you try to change just one level of your behavior, then there are still four other layers that will keep you stuck. <coughs> we need to make a distinction between a belief, an emotion, a story, and a behavior, since these are terms we will be using frequently. An early trauma or a crisis, the original incident, produces a belief, the meaning or meanings created from the past events. Now, this belief produces an emotion, a felt sensation in the body. Now, an emotion produces a story or a thought, how you describe your circumstances. And now this story produces a behavior, how you repeatedly react to your circumstances. Why haven't you lived your purpose until now? It's simple. You have been scared to change because change feels like death. So instead you went out in search of an external something or someone to fill the void. The world will never satisfy you. What you're really looking for is a connection to your soul. The scary but real truth about life is that you cannot control most of it. All you can control is the meaning you give to the events. Everything else is out of your hands. No one you admire has total control of their existence. Those who have found their purpose have found a sweet spot between outward attempts to make things happen and the divine surrender of the outcome to God. The thing that you have been searching for in the world is your inner essence, that connection to who you are. When you stop the external search for the essence of connection and instead come home to yourself, you connect to that thing that has been missing until now. That's right. What's been missing in your life is you. Who you are within is far more powerful than the circumstances of your life, far more powerful than your past, far more powerful than your family, far more powerful than the opinions of other people. Your soul, your heart, your essence, is connected to all that is, to your Creator. Fear contracts the body. Your soul expands it. That's the way life works. Expansion followed by contraction followed by expansion. It is a predictable pattern. As you take more and more risks, the stakes get bigger and bigger, which means the fear also gets bigger and bigger. The people who allow themselves the opportunity to play big must face their saboteur time and time again with more courage, more tenacity, and more faith each time. And there you have it. Claim your power. Please do help out. It is easy. Simply like this video so more people can enjoy it. Share it too and spread the word. Leave a comment and do share your thoughts. Subscribe to my channel. Stay up to date. And the link to this book is in the description below. So buy it, read, and never stop learning. Especially learning about yourself and nature. So gift yourself by taking the free human needs test on my website and find out what actually motivates you. What innate human need is driving all of your decisions and your behavior. And if you feel you are ready 
to improve your self-awareness, social awareness, self-management and relationship management even further, do check out my Master of Life Awareness program. The links are in the description below. Thank you. Love and respect.